Hello to everybody. Thank you for watching this virtual conference. It's a great pleasure to be participating in this symposium online in this 2020. Let me introduce myself. My name is Angela Patricia Atara, and this research was done under the guide of my professor, Lady Catherine Cantor. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about a workplace vocal health promotion program that was a hybrid with face-to-face -face and telepractice components implemented in a Colombian university. To start, I explain some background. In a recent paper by Hunter and collaborators, suggest the two new definition of vocal demand. This concept refers to vocal requirement for a given communication scenario. And in this context, we are considering these demands that the teachers are having as a factor that is influencing of vocal functioning. Another aspect is that the teachers have a high vocal demand because the working conditions are exposing these workers in a specific communication scenario. These conditions are related to duration of the classes, acoustical conditions of the classrooms, number of the students, and requirement of voice signal by duration, intensity, and reputation. For this reason, the vocal health promotion program are suggest because this focus to reduce a vocal demand and currently these programs have a combination of face-to-face -face and virtual sessions as cost-effective and functional alternative. In this way the objective was to analyze the changes of vocal functioning through the application of workplace vocal health promotion program included these components for college professors in a Colombian university. The participants in this study were seven college professors from a public university in Colombia and three were males and four were females. As a inclusion criteria, the professors had to four hours maximum of vocal load in frontal lectures and not receive voice training in the past. First, we applied a general questionnaire about working conditions related to voice. Of course, after signing the import consent form, and the questionnaire uh, included sections as sociodemographic information, quality of life, and uh, also we performed an acoustical voice evaluation and we applied it to vocal symptoms reported before and after of intervention in all participants. Finally, Five professors were assigned to intervention group and two professors no received intervention. You can see in this slide the description of the program or intervention. And the program consists in four sessions, one per week, and each session has a duration of 40 minutes. And the session one and the session four were face to face, which means that uh, we were in a meeting with the professor for giving our training in the lab and the session two and three were online through platform called uh, Moodle and each session contains three modules. The first one is about uh, vocal hygiene, the second one is related to vocal training and the first one and the last one is related to modification of vocal task or modification in teaching activities and also it's important to mention that we had already finished for the collection of the data 
the participants of no intervention group receive information of two online sessions and uh, feeling that uh, feeling with the ethics committee guidelines. In this slide, you see some images of Moodle platform uh, when the teachers sign in during online session two and three. And here we included the material of each sessions and the professor can access to this material after if they need to check the information. And for session two and three contain videos for uh, practicing the exercises uh, with the different instructions and uh, with the different vocal tasks. So in these results you can see in this table the demographic uh, characteristic of participants and the majority of them belong to economic science department and the mean age was higher in no intervention group. In this table, we compare pre and post measures uh, in vocal acoustic parameters. And in this section, you see the results of intervention group. And we obtained that intervention group had an increase in maximum phonation time a decrease in shimmer, jitter, and harmonics to noise ratio after the intervention. On the other hand, no intervention group had a um, de um, decrease in harmonics to noise ratio and a increase in maximum phonation time, jitter, and shimmer. Um, but unfortunately, this difference for intervention group uh, were not statistically significant, but we think that it's because the small number of participants. Also, in the fundamental frequency and intensity, we found that intervention group had an increase on fundamental frequency and in the intensity of the same way. On the contrary, no intervention group had a decrease in fundamental frequency and in intensity. This difference in fundamental frequency was statistically significant when used a general linear model. In relation to vocal symptoms for intervention group, the professors had a decrease in the scores of throat sore, vocal fatigue, and hoarseness at the end of this research. And these results uh, were statistically different uh, in pre post measures and for no intervention group there was no changes in vocal symptoms except in vocal fatigue. Uh, in conclusion the results suggest that intervention group had some important effect on voice parameters and also in voice symptoms. But we need more participants in order to corroborate our results. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, you can send an email to this email address. And thank you so much.